Okay, so today we are, what we're going to do is we're going to, we are going to learn about the CRO, which stands for cathode ray oscilloscope. So what is the CRO used for? The CRO um, is used to measure the amplitude or the uh, and the frequency or the period of a uh, alternating voltage. So the input to the CRO must be a voltage, huh? right? It cannot be any other inputs, but it must be in the form of voltage, electrical voltage. Now, um, how does it measure your electrical voltage? So you will have a terminal for you to connect your signal. So let's say your signal is um, an alternating voltage like this. So you will feed it into your CRO. And then what will happen is the CRO will display the trace on the screen, which is here. All right? They will show the trace on the screen. Now, um, when they show the trace on the screen, uh, you can actually adjust the scale on the horizontal axis and also the vertical axis. So it's something like plotting a graph where you can choose whatever scale you want to represent your graph. So the CRO uh, will be able to show the trace that you are, I mean the show the trace of the voltage that you're sending in um, and you can actually adjust how wide or how um, how high the, the trace is shown on the screen. Now, uh, you have two uh, things that you can control. The horizontal axis uh, is controlled uh, by um, by a setting called the time base and the vertical axis is controlled by a setting uh, called by the Y output right so this is called Y output now uh, how do you control uh, your uh, Y output and your time base and all those uh, it depends uh, on uh, the skill that you set but before we talk about scales, let's talk about um, what happens when you turn on and off uh, the time base or your Y output. For example, if you were to uh, turn uh, off both of your time base and your Y output, so the signal that comes in here all right, uh, will not be shown uh, as a, a sinusoidal trace here because you don't allow, when you, because when you turn it off, you don't allow it to travel horizontally. And when you turn off the Y output, you don't allow it to travel vertically. So what you will see is just basically a dot. Okay, you'll see a dot. But if let's say um, you actually turn on the time base or turn on the time base and you turn off the Y output, that means you will allow it to move horizontally but not vertically. So what you will see is just a straight line like this. Or if you turn off your time base and you turn on your Y output, then uh, you will allow it to travel uh, vertically but not horizontally. So what you will see on the screen is just a vertical line. So usually we use this setting, which is uh, time base off but Y output on, if we're going to measure amplitude. Because um, if you if you get a trace on the screen like this, you just have to measure the total distance from top to bottom, and you divide by two, and that will be your amplitude. Okay. Now, uh, what what if you want to uh turn on both of this, turn on both of your time base and your Y uh, output. That means you will allow the signal to travel both vertically and horizontally. So that is when you will get a uh, the perfect trace, right? onto your screen. So when do we use this setting? Uh, when we are interested in to find the frequency or the period. So let me explain to you how to find the frequency and the period from the screen. Okay, so uh, let's say uh, we make a bigger screen so it's easier for you to see. So what, 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 you, what you will get if you turn both uh, turn on both the time base and the Y output is you will get a trace something like probably like this. Okay, so what can we obtain from here? You can actually obtain the, um, the amplitude, alright, if you just uh, measure from here to here. Alright, so let's say, oh yeah, how do we measure? By the way, each of these boxes, right, uh, actually are set to about 1 centimeters, right? So these are usually 1 centimeters. So which means to say um, your Y output, your amplitude here, is actually two centimeters so then how do you determine the amplitude now remember we said we had these two knobs to control your um, time base and your y output so the time base setting you can actually set to like one centimeter is to how many seconds whereas your y output you can set to one centimeter is to how many volts right you can set to how many volts with uh, Okay, 
So which means to say, um, you get to determine the scale. No, you know, like you're when you're plotting a graph, you can uh, set whatever scale that you want. Uh, so if you choose some scales, then the graph will look big. You choose a, a different scale, then the graph will look small. So same thing, you can choose your trace to occupy uh, the whole screen or half the screen or less of the screen by just adjusting these two scales. So if let's say uh, in this example, uh, I set to one centimeter is to five volts. So what it means is, since I'm getting two centimeters here, so it means that the voltage of this signal, the peak, uh, the peak voltage is the amplitude of this voltage, must be equals to 10 volts. Alright, because it's 2 centimeters times 5 volt per centimeter. Now what about how to determine frequency or period? Now the easiest way to, different, uh, to find out period is to find the time taken for one cycle, which in this case is 4 centimeters. Now let's say we set the time base to 1 centimeter is to 10 milliseconds. So it means that since yours is 40 centimeter, so this is equivalent to 40 milliseconds. So that's how you determine the period. And if you want to find frequency, right, since this is my period, so you can 1 over the period and you will get the frequency of the wave. Alright, so that's how you use it. Now let's say um, uh, you want to find frequency and period, uh, is there a better way to do it uh, other than taking uh, one cycle? I said yes. Huh? Uh, the better way is to take as many cycles as you possibly can. So what do I mean? Now, uh, if I were to take uh, all the cycles here, which means there's one, two cycles, so I can find the period by actually taking a different formula, which is the period you can take as total time divided by the number of oscillations that you used all right and the frequency we can take total number of oscillations that you used and you divide by total time now what do i mean now if you refer to the previous slide all right um, then you will notice that uh, the total time taken uh, was uh, eight boxes right or not all right so maybe i redraw it so that you can see clearer here Okay, so uh, if we look back at the graph that was uh, shown in the other, um, the previous slide, we will notice that they're all together. How many boxes from for this uh, for this trace? There are two cycles, and they're all together eight boxes, right now. So the total time will be eight box times the time base, which is ten milliseconds, and uh, we will take the total number of oscillations, or in this case cycles, which is two. So we shall get um, eighty divided by two, which is forty milliseconds which is the same as the previous uh, slide uh, the previous slide so same time uh, what about frequency we can take total number of oscillations which is 2 divided by total time which is 8 times 10 milliseconds all right so you get the same answer so why do we want to do this uh, it is because sometimes when they show the trace on the CRO uh, the trace may not occupy exactly four boxes meaning to say maybe the box uh, when you are drawing it I mean when you're drawing the trace could be slightly less than four boxes which we didn't realize here so but if over many cycles then we will see the difference uh, and then we'll be able to uh, check the frequency or the period and then uh, we can calculate it uh, more accurately so the the logic is uh, we want to avoid any tiny um, uh, mistakes that we can't see if you only take uh, one cycle all right okay now let's talk about changing the time base setting now just now we said the period was 40 milliseconds right and the scale we used was one centimeter was to 10 milliseconds now let's say I switch this from 1 cm to 10 milliseconds to 1 cm to 20 milliseconds, which you can do easily by just turning the knob on the time base, then what trace would you see? Now, it means that since your period is 40 milliseconds and the time base is 1 cm is to 20 milliseconds, that means we only need 2 cm to represent your period. So, you will start from, let's say, here and you will only use up to here. So, the middle will be the turning uh, the change over point at the zero mark so then your trace you will get something like this so this is what we can do so if you want the graph to squeeze together close uh, closer together uh, squeeze closer together then you what you can do is you can actually um, adjust your time base this way